Defending your base can be rather difficult, but not hard when you understand a few principles about how pathfinding works. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make the ultimate defensive one-way entry point using compartmentalized zones that confuse the AI's pathfinding. Channel all of your enemies into a giant kill pit. So the first way I'm going to explain this to you is just in simple terms and ideas, and then I'm actually going to show you a real-life example of a 500 raid showcasing all of these things happening. So we're going to start basic. Essentially what you have is your base, what I'm calling section A, section B, and section C. Now your base is just your base. You want this to be the center of the maze design. You also want all of your people, your drones, and anything that moves or can be attacked to be towards the front of the maze for this to work. What happens is if an enemy detects a unit that it can attack, it will find the shortest path to that unit, which is straight through your fencing and your maze design. However, if those units are here, then the short it detects the shortest path as being through the giant opening that you have. You can see my base, I only have one way in full of traps, okay? So those are the basic principles. So for section A, it's very simple. You're going to have your defensive fortifications. This can be the wooden fortification, the carbon fortification, or the force field barrier. You're going to have that all here. In the beginning of the game, I start with a simple fencing, and that works. But towards the end of the game, it's not adequate enough. Beginning of the game, you can just use the simple fencing and then put the large defenses behind it at a later point. So section A is a combination, both the fortification and a layer of fencing. And don't be afraid to put gates on your fencing. It doesn't change any of the pathfinding issues. I have gates everywhere so people can go out any of the sites. Section B is another perimeter fence that is at least three tiles away from the other fence. This goes around the whole perimeter. If you can, section these off as much as possible. This is part of the AI confusion strategy. You can see here, I went a little crazy. And then section C, of course, is just the outer perimeter fencing, just another section. So B and C are the same thing but they're just spaced apart, compartmentalized sections. Now what this does, you can see that this gate is broken. Sometimes the AI will detect the shortest path is to cut through all of this. What happens is that unit busts through the fence, takes five steps in, realizes he made a big mistake and he cannot reconcile the pathfinding because he has all of these options. And then he simply runs back out and realizes that the only way is this way. This happens all the time. 99% of the time it works, when it they do break through, it's usually just one or three units. Once you have real fortifications like this, it's not really a big deal. A common strategy to use would actually be potentially flying drones over here. So if they detect anyone on these walls, they'll come out and beat them. Problem with that though, is that if any other units detect that attackable unit, then they will all come towards this and destroy it, which is why I just have these ground units in the back, just in case anyone gets through. It only happens like maybe one out of 20 times. And when it does happen, it's maybe 10 units out of 700. Very, very rare, but you should be slightly prepared now this is on an insane difficulty that I'm playing right here. This is Chaos Moon Insane. I've taken on waves of all the way up to 800 with this design. So you can see another thing that I do, and because I told you that a lot of this is based on line of sight, is that I have right here, you can see a little blinder so that my lasers do not shoot out at people, which would tell them to attack these fencing. If your turrets attack a target, it says, hey, here I am, and everyone engages. People can actually shoot without having this issue. So you can have your people shoot, but you do not want any of your turrets having a radius outside of this perimeter. That is a no-no. If you have a laser turret, for instance, that we're shooting people over here, they will all start piling in onto your design and beating the shit out of everything. So this is critical, absolutely critical to getting this to work, is that you make sure the only place they're attacking is where you want them to, okay? Now I do have motion sensors on this design and they work very well. I have a lot of them fortified, I kind of overdid it. But yes, make sure that your lasers are not shooting outside of the design. Make sure everyone is shooting pretty much well within this area and you're gonna be good to go. Those are the ways that people screw up and tell the AI it's okay to attack the fencing. So now I'm gonna show you a real life battle implementing all of the things that I'm talking about. So you can see that I have all of my units garrisoned towards the front. I have all of my transportation units garrisoned. I have all of my people. Hope is out on an expedition. Here is a band of 543. This is actually a relatively small raid for me. But you can see one landed right here. 
right outside my fencing. You can see that in this design, I kind of created this huge buffer zone here, which is actually working a lot better. But because of this mountain and because of certain things, uh, there's a lot of distance. You could probably get away with not having these layerings and just having a really large buffer. I have my one entryway with a bunch of traps and an orchestra of guns. Just an You can see right now that there, the AI pathfinding is already saying, hey, we can't go this way. Uh, there's a, But there's a way over here and it's sending everyone that way. I have to bust down my graphics flagging up a storm. I have about 10,000 bodies over here, so it's uh, ever since then the game's been kind of glitched out. So you can see everyone is running, and I'm hoping I get an instance where one of them breaks the fence so I can show you the pathfinding AI. So far, so good. Okay, so all of them are running around. All of these guys are running around. All of okay, so here we go. Perfect, perfect. So you can see over here, one of them said, hey, I think I found a way. Just one guy. So he runs off from the pack, right? And then he just keeps going. Then he realizes, hey, I can't do that. Oh, this is beautiful. And he runs back. Perfect. It's exactly what I wanted to show you. Exactly what I wanted to show you. And then all of them come. And so more examples over here. Perfect, perfect. Guy breaks in, realizes, hey, I can't go this way. So there's another one. Hey, I can't do this. Runs around. These guys are running around because they're confused. Uh, and that happens. They're like, it's kind of funny, actually. But for the most part, none of them know what to do. And that's why it's important that you have a fortification, not just the fencing. All right. And we can see. And I also want to point out that these bad boys right here, these aerial drones, super cool. Oh, yeah. We're getting crazy here. We're getting crazy today. Now the rocket launchers are doing their part. Got this badass music, hell yeah. Oh, the music stopped right when I said I liked it. I think I have to reinstall the game. I'm having that music issue that only Lone Z was having too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh lord, for one unit? All right, and then the aerial will clean, the aerial will come out and clean up the smaller units. All right, so you saw in motion, they get confused, but for the most part they won't break through as long as you have a solid carbon wall like that, or even a wood wall. You can use wood for sure. Um, but that's how you confuse the enemy into following the pathfinding, and it works every single time. I have a lot of series on this game. I, I love making forts. I love designing defenses. So, hope you enjoyed this video.